Well, in this program, I want to look at LEDs and how they're replacing the light bulbs um, slowly and their role in electronics. And I want to get you actually get an LED running. And I'm also going to look at breadboards, which are little electronic prototyping boards for us to put things together on when we don't have a soldering iron. And for this program, we're going to use a couple of LEDs. We're going to use a 500 ohm resistor and we're going to use a breadboard and a four cell battery pack. So that's going to be sick, giving us six volts. If you look at the resistor closely, you'll see that there's a group of four bands on the left and one sing single brown band on the right. The brown band on the right tells us that this is a 1% tolerance resistor. In other words, it's accurate. The value is accurate to 1%. Then if we read from left to right, we see the green band that represents a five, followed by a brown band represents a one, followed by a black band, which represents a zero. And then the final black band tells us how many extra zeros to add on to the end of the number. In this case, zero zeros. So, so the actual value of the resistor is 510 ohms or 510 ohms. So on my right hand side here is a, a normal incandescent bulb as of the type invented by Edison. Um, and over here is an LED lamp. And I'm going to use those to illuminate both sides of my face. So of course we've got some daylight illumination here, but these should be quite a bit stronger. So there you go. There's the uh, incandescent bulb. And let's just turn around and switch off, switch on this LED lamp. And wow, you can see that the LEDs are doing a lot better. Same amount of power for these two bulbs. But this one is the LEDs are really putting out the light. This one, of course, is putting it all out as heat. Sad, really, isn't it? Back in the late 70s, my pocket calculator had an LED display, but nowadays they don't. But my washing machine does use an LED display. And so does my cooker for its clock. And the type of component that we'll find inside there is something similar to this, which has got these eight digits that it can display, which is essentially there's a little LED behind each one. And here are the connections for actually switching those LEDs on and off. We won't be using this clock LED this time round, but we're going to just start with a single LED. When a light bulb heats up, its resistance increases. And in doing so, that slows down the electric current to an acceptable level. When an LED lights up, the resistance decreases and the electric current therefore increases and the LED would eventually go pop. So in order to protect our LED, we need to put a resistor in series with it to, to restrict the flow of electric current. And here's the resistor, which has to be the appropriate value, um, 500 ohms approximately, um, to use with this LED and this battery pack, which is a six volt battery pack. So in order to connect these up, we don't have a soldering iron at the moment. We're going to use one of these, what's called a breadboard, and you can buy these on eBay for about £2.50. Um, and they're very useful um, before you actually start thinking about things like soldering irons. And as you can see, it's full of little holes. There are connections um, connecting these holes in a pattern. Um, that pattern is very conveniently shown in this book. So you can see that the little sets of five holes there are connected vertically. And then there's uh, two strips along the top and two strips along the bottom that are connected together. And these little holes, we can take components and we can poke their electrical leads into the holes where they can make connection with the contacts inside. Looking at the LED, one you'll notice that one lead is shorter than the other. You'll also notice that there's a slight flat on the side of the LED there that you can just see reflecting the light as I tip it. The longest lead is essentially the lead that has to go onto the positive supply. 
So the short lead is negative and the flat marks the negative lead of an LED. So here's my breadboard. Let's connect the positive lead from the power supply into one of these five hole strips. And then the LED, the longer lead is the one that needs to go onto the positive. So we'll connect that into the holes. And then we need that resistor, the 500 ohm resistor. Connect that into the, onto the LED. And then put the other end into a different hole on the board and bring along the negative lead. And as soon as we insert that, yes, we have light. So just poke that in solidly in there so it stays on and uh, it's not a very bright one but I've got a high brightness LED here so I'm going to pull that one out and here's here's my white LED again taking the the longer of the two leads and just inserting that where the red lead is and it goes straight on and shines very very brightly and there we have it an LED.